so anyway, what, what is, what's Project Indiana? Well, Project Indiana grew out of a question that I was asked many, many times after I joined Sun about six months ago, which is, uh, what's a Linux guy doing at Sun? Uh, so I'm, I'm primarily a, a Linux guy, or at least thought of as a Linux guy. Um, I started the Debian Linux distribution 15 years ago. Before I came to Sun, I was the CTO of the Linux Foundation. And this, there's a broad perception that, that Sun is anti-Linux or competes with Linux, which, by the way, is not true. But that's certainly the way the world sees it. And so to have a Linux person, or at least someone with a very strong Linux background, come into Sun, it was a, it was a, it was a natural question. And to me, it made perfect sense. And the, the, the answer to that question is that the, the term Linux is largely used as a stand-in for the broader uh, concept of open source. So when uh, people say they want Linux, what they're talking about is not so much the Linux kernel or even uh, the technology that's built around the Linux kernel and delivered to market in the form of the various Linux distributions. It's the, as Simon was saying, it's the, it's the flexibility and the choice that open source gives you. Uh, it's the fact also that there are many people in the world who understand Linux and how it works. So looking at, at Solaris, the fact that Solaris is open source now, right, the fact that it already has many components in common with Linux, uh, that we, needed, we simply needed to do a few things around Solaris to make it more familiar to this broader audience uh, and to deliver to the market what the market wanted when it said it, it wanted Linux. So pretty quickly we started this project called Project Indiana. Uh, two goals of the project. One is uh, how do we make Solaris more familiar to this new generation of, of users and developers who have come out of colleges and universities understanding how Linux works. Right? The second is Solaris is, has some absolutely amazing technology in it. Uh, with the open sourcing of Solaris two years ago, Solaris began to appear on the radar of a lot of open source developers and, and deployers. Right, so technologies like Dtrace certainly caught my attention. Um, I spent some time in, 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 uh, in, in uh, computer science research, doing kernel development, and I would have loved to have a technology like, uh, like Dtrace at that time. Now, the problem is, again, two years ago in Sun Open Source Solaris, uh, and form the Open Solaris project, put the code base out into the Open Solaris community. Someone, someone coming from Linux hears the term Open Solaris and they think that's the community version of Solaris. I'll go to opensolaris.org and I'll download it. That's exactly what I did. And I found that the situation was far more complicated than that. Open Solaris is the code base. It's delivered in binary form through something called Solaris Express Community Edition. If you actually want to run Open Solaris, you have to download the code, you have to build it. So Project Indiana and part of the familiarity or, or lowering barriers to adoption goal is making it easier for people to, uh, to adopt the technology, particularly those coming from the Linux world. Now, because the goal is to, is to increase adoption, we, we also have a very strong focus on leveraging the unique capabilities of Solaris that are, are, are in the operating system already. Things like Dtrace and ZFS and Zones and SMF. Right? So it's not just about taking Linux technology and moving it into Solaris. That's part of it because we need to do that to make it easier for, for, for these users to make the transition, to bridge the familiarity gap as I often call it. Uh, but we also have to entice them after we build the bridge to cross that gap. Right, so we have to highlight how it is that we are uh, utilizing the technologies that Solaris has that no other operating system has, uh, both in, in the product itself and in how we are address, addressing a lot of these familiarity uh, issues. So I started talking about this basic concept pretty quickly. And we, we very, very shortly uh, said, you know, we're going to deliver something by October. And to be honest, at the time when we said that, or when I said that, I wasn't entirely sure how we were going to manage to do that. But, so what I'm here today to tell you is we are going to do just that. So by the end of the month, we will have the first developer preview of OpenSolaris available for download at opensolaris.org. What will be in this developer preview is the new uh, installation technology, which you've seen uh, come to market in Solaris Express Developer Edition, the, the latest version of that. Uh, we have developed a, a new package system. 
uh, which has the same kind of features that you would expect from a package system if you are a Linux user. You will be able to uh, install a, a basic operating system and then reach out over the network, pull packages from network repositories, put those packages on top of that core operating system. You'll be able to upgrade your system, so no more downloading Solaris uh, and going through a CD-based upgrade procedure. You can now upgrade your system on the fly, much as you can do uh, around Linux. And now one thing to point out is this is a developer preview. Right? So this is not the finished product. The finished product will be delivered in March of next year. Uh, the main goal of this is to bootstrap a package building community around Solaris. Because, or, because what's interesting about Linux is the fact that you can reach out into the broader open source package ecosystem and pull things down. Uh, and we need to be able to offer that same capability around Solaris. Uh, 